don't worry, that's the last slide you'll see. Let's do some straight database talk, no slides. I'm late to the game regarding instance additions. If I understand correctly, this works great for PL SQL, but other DDL cannot be versioned. If I'm wrong, I'll continue to research it. My context is a desire to roll back an application release to the prior version without a point in time recovery. The utopia and, and the complete implementation of addition-based redefinition does support DDL as well. And it's not, not necessarily the fact that you version your DDL, the way addition-based redefinition hangs together in terms of philosophy is that physical objects are cross all additions and therefore they represent all components of all additions. So if I have a table with columns C1 and C2 in version one of my application and in version two of my application, it has columns C2, C3 and C4 and I got rid of column C1, then the table actually has columns one, two, three and four. It has all the columns that could possibly be in all releases. Version one of the application has a view that sits on top of that table, which only exposes the columns that were relevant for that version of the application. Version two of the application has the columns only relevant in a view for that version of the application. The table effectively is the entire life cycle of the application. It has all columns that ever existed in the application, and they are filtered out by the use of views, special views called additioning views on top of that. And then your code only ever references the additioning views, it never references the base tables. We have these things called cross addition or cross version triggers then, which are responsible for making sure that the stuff that happens on version two of your application does enough to make sure that the data is still correct in version one and vice versa, until at some point you retire the old edition. It is quite possible to have all the DDL and all the PL SQL and in fact everything just about, except for things that cannot be additioned. Um, there's a few things like I think context variables and etc. some particular objects in the database, uh, directories, I think, but they're generally not, they don't consume space. You can do the whole thing in addition-based redefinition. A classic example of that is our own e-business suite. And we're talking 25,000 database objects there, 25,000 plus in terms of tables, indexes, etc. They do their live patching with addition-based redefinition. So rest assured, at the insane levels of complexity that e-business suite is, is they still use addition-based redefinition for online migration to do patches and version upgrades. So uh, it can be done. For me, one of the things I like doing is I often think I don't have to go maybe to that level. For customers that use EBR, one of the things that I've done is we've sort of adopted this what I call happy compromise, which is from time to time you do DDL changes in terms of table definition, etc. But you do far more frequently code changes. You know, because generally you find bugs or you have small enhancements to make. So what, I, I, what we used to do is we said, let's use EBR anytime we change triggers, views, PL SQL, et cetera. If we're doing significant DDL changes, then we sucked it up, we took a downtime, and we actually did the, the application upgrade without doing the EBR stuff. And that was just a compromise because once you do get a thing of embracing the whole EBR methodology, then it can get a bit more complicated because you do have to make sure you're maintaining data correctness across all editions in real time. <laughs>